we look at the past, I would hope we can get inspired by looking at the craftsmanship and looking at the details and long to build better because we see beautiful things like this. We become enchanted with Europe. Uh, we become enchanted with, with these designs and this architecture and the scale and the amount of craftsmanship and just the beauty there. And so we're going to kind of dig into the European aspect. We've got, you know, England, London, UK, you got France, and then you've got this Mediterranean. And the Mediterranean is going to, you know, encompass a number of different Italian, Spanish, you know, Southern France, all these different things. But we're going to talk about, you know, how these styles change as you go from colder climates to warmer climates. Roof pitches change, roof materials change, right? You think about these houses that are built, you know, in France in 1600, all local materials, all local traditions, you know, there was a way of building in Normandy that wasn't happening in, you know, uh, southern France, right? And so there's very regional styles and regional details that are going on that make this even more lovely. You don't see the same thing over and over again. Okay, so we'll start with the English and the Tudor revival. All right, the Tudor period is, you know, 1485, 1603. It's kind of late medieval, right? It's right before the Renaissance starts happening. So, you know, the Renaissance is happening in, in Italy, 14, 1400s, 1500s, right? And so that classicism creeps towards England very slowly. So they've got their own stylings and their own details that are part of this Tudor period. Um, you know, certainly the timber frame buildings that they were building, um, you know, the leaded glass and this kind of leaded glass detail. We're working on a house right now with some barge boards and the decorative barge boards, but all of this kind of style and building, um, there's areas of England like the Cotswolds that are just so charming and so unique. Um, the scale of the houses and everything else, we've had numerous clients ask us to build a Cotswold house just because they go there and they fall in love with it. Rightly so. Um, thatch roofs, right? This is this actually is Hansel and Gretel's house. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but start picking up on the details that we're going to see as we look at these uh, pictures. Um, you know, this effort to match the thatch roof. You'll see those houses that have the rolled uh, gable ends and the things where they're trying with shingles, like asphalt shingles, trying to capture this that that thatch roof feel. But it's so magical, right, with the, with the cresting at the top and everything else. But the scale of the windows, leaded glass, right, that's very important. Plank doors, um, the gardens, the gates, right? So you're going to start chimney pots. You're going to start seeing those things want to be copied in America um, by architects and designers. So stone walls, see this detail here where we've got you know, stone and brick infill that tell a story. We're gonna see that on American style houses where you have brick and then you've got rubble of stone coming through there. All of these things are efforts for us to look at that and go, hmm, how do I do that back home? Um, which is awful fun. The French style, French revival things. Um, you know, you've got kind of three regions. You've got Normandy, which is Northern France. You've got the Loire Valley, and then you've got Provence. So, um, each one will have a different style and a different detail. Um, Lower Valley was a very, it was kind of right, go back one, it's the middle part of, of uh, France, it goes up into Paris, uh, or just below Paris, it was a very wealthy area. And so, um, you know, the Biltmore is done in this, which is a little earlier, but it's done in this Chateau-esque style. But this is where that design comes from, this is where that look is. Uh, all the rich people lived here because that's where the vineyards were, right on the valley. Uh, and so they were all competing for and trying to design their, uh, their different looks. I mean, where do you think Disney World came from, right? I mean, that, you know, is Disneyland, right, with all the turrets and all that. It's why? It's magical, right? It's, it's uh, mysterious. It's like, who builds like this anymore? So it's enchanting. So. Um, that, that, so you've got that rich part of, part of town. Normandy is, is a poorer area, more medieval, smaller villages, where you see the timber framing. And then some of the things we're gonna see as we look at period of idle houses of this period is a lot of timber framing. And what happens, the way it's you know, <laughs> interpreted in America is, is that it ends up being um, 
European and not necessarily, we're going to look at some houses. I'm going to say, you know, what style is that? And you're going to go, it's, uh, right? Well, it's kind of European and it's not strongly English or strongly French. Looked at this thing a little bit earlier. Um, the overhangs, um, the stone and timber work, uh, the tile. Certainly the tile is something that uh, Ludovici was trying to copy. Charming little, and this is this is pictures from this book, which is what the book that uh, um, Dilbeck was using or used for inspiration. Uh, and then when you go into southern France, uh, you begin to see what's happening here, right? In in northern France, you have snow loads. Okay, so roofs have to be pitched very steeply. In southern France, you don't have snow loads, and so you have roofs that change. And so the architecture is changing. Right, because of regional differences, because of climate, because of availability of stone. I mean, people love that caramely uh, colored stone from the Cotswolds and they want to match that and because it's just so enchanting. So we try to find these regional things. Um, but these are all, I mean, this, this, as we get down into the Mediterranean area, right, you're seeing these barrel tile roofs, you're seeing low pitches. Um, and, you know, this is southern France, but it could easily be part of the Mediterranean. Uh, that Mediterranean is kind of a big area, right? You have Amalfi uh, Coast and, and the kind of building that was going on there, the bright colors, uh, the architecture, even flat roofs in some of these areas, uh, decorative tile, colorful tiles, um, right on the water and, and stucco, right? Stucco finishes. Um, think about this Mediterranean area. You also have uh, Palladian architecture, which is Italian in this Italian style, which is very formal. Uh, very balanced, right? Uh, right here's a, here's another Palladian village uh, or Palladian house, right? But just you know, if you've been to Europe and you've you know been to France and you've sat on these you know, gravel uh, uh, patios where the, the the weather's so wonderful, um, they are magical places and they are enchanting. Um, things up here like this is a dovecote up here sundial, barrel tile roofs, open loggias, right? Um, very inviting place to want to go in and stay. This is what enchanted us. On the colonial side, okay, in America, not everybody was doing European things, but there was also strong exposure for what was going on in America. And that's, that's why that travel, the train travel becomes so important. Um, but you have things that the missions of, San, of, of California the, the, the ranch tile of architecture that happens, uh, the early ranching things, and then of course the stuff on the East Coast, which you know uh, the White Pine series and, and Habs and everything else we're looking at, but you've got a lot of different styles of architecture happening in America that's, that's very uh, contagious, right? Mount, Mount Vernon. There are a number of colonial revival houses, especially in the 40s, that copy this Mount Vernon architecture. And you've seen those high front porches with the tall skinny columns. You know, that the proportions of that column, right, right, as far as the cannons go, um, or Italian cannons go, Palladian cannons, isn't really right. But it works, it's part of our heritage, it's part of what we uh, are trying to build and emulate, and of course, that's what's happening there. Um, Monticello, obviously Thomas Jefferson's home, uh, this is Colonial Williamsburg. It was certainly very enchanting and lighting. And, and then just the architecture, this would be mid-Atlantic, right? So you're in Virginia, okay? So there's a, we're discovering that there is a style of architecture that's built in mid, the mid-Atlantic area of, of the United States that's different from the things that were built in Boston or New York. Again, there's regional differences for us, just like there is in Europe. And architects are dialing into these differences, looking at them going, hmm, which, which things should I copy? Uh, we were, we'll talk about design a little bit later, but we were better copyists um, then than we are today. It's one reason why I think our houses are not as charming as they were historically. <laughs>